Hey guys, how you doing? Um, Alright, so I can finally get started on this uh, Neon Vector Shooter tutorial. So, um, yeah, I'll put the link for this tutorial down in the uh, description of the video. Um, so, basically, I'm gonna I'm working through this tutorial so I can learn how to uh, run XNA, or work with XNA. And um, if you're following along, what I'm gonna do is um, work through this tutorial, make little video updates on how I go with it if I run into any hiccups. Because this is an XNA tutorial, it's not a mono game tutorial, so um, there, there are a couple of little things and I've found uh, a couple of uh, issues uh, so far with the tutorial when I'm trying to work with XNA, uh, sorry, with uh, mono game. So uh, if I just bring this source tree window over, you can see I've already uh, finished up to, I've finished the first part already which is the one that I'm talking about in this video today. Um, and if you want to uh, take a copy of uh, what I've written, um, I've, been, I've gone more than just writing the code in the tutorial, but I put all comments all in the code and everything uh, to better understand what's going on, to the best, as best as I can anyway. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, I'll put the link to the GitHub um, in the description of the video as well. All right, so, this is where uh, we want to end up. Um, something, something like this, about like warping backgrounds, less enemies, crazy effects. Um, but at the end of the tutorial, this is what um, I've got going at the moment. So no music actually, just like this. Um, <clears throat> so if I jump into the code over here, um, actually, first thing we'll do is have a look at the tutorial. So, the first part of the tutorial tells you to uh, go ahead and download all this stuff. Uh, mostly, um, everything works pretty well uh, running Mono Game. Uh, a couple of differences are uh, I have uh, set this up um, as a shared project, a uh, shared multi platform project, um, so that the advantage of that is I have all of the shared classes in here. So, this is everything that I've created for the um, the first tutorial um, and I've also got a shared content project here that all the projects use so I only need to have one copy of each uh, asset um, to be able to use it across all the different platforms that I'm uh, developing for and uh, the one that I test against mainly is the uh, Universal Windows uh, platform project uh, but I'll also it also works for Windows and OpenGL and I haven't had to change anything um, so if you want to know how I set that up, um, I'd recommend you have a look at the video here and um, yeah, I'll, I'll put a link there for you to, to click on now. So if you want to have a look at that, um, I'm teaching you how to set that up. Um, and a uh, source control as well. If you're new to development, um, setting this up is probably a really good idea. It, it, it certainly helped me out. I had to go back once uh, to a previous version that I wrote. Uh, so definitely set that up. I'll put the video, uh, a link for that video up here as well, as well as in the uh, description um, of this one. So you can have a look at that. So I'd recommend go through those two first, um, make sure everything's set up and ready to go, and then step into tutorial. All right, so jumping into tutorial, mostly you can just um, just follow along. Um, it, it's, it's a great tutorial, it explains everything that the guy's doing. Um, so just briefly, the entity class, if you don't know what an abstract class is, which I didn't know uh, when I first started this, it's a, it's a parent class that you can use uh, to if your classes have um, shared properties. For example, a player object, a, uh, the bullets and enemies all have, uh, for this game, this Geo War game that I'm making, um, all need to be drawn to the screen and all need to have an update method. So in this entity parent class, um, we put in an update and a draw method and, and these properties which are shared among all the other entities such as the player, the bullets, the enemies. <coughs> the next one is the uh, entity manager class um, that he describes and that is a really helpful uh, static class to uh, manage the updating and the drawing of all of the entities in the game rather than having to do them all individually in, inside the uh, update or draw loops within the game root class. So, um, 
Yep, so basically we just throw all the entities into a list and then manage them all that way. So have a look through there uh, if you're working through this. Um, next one along is the uh, art class. So this is just a really uh, easy uh, way to access uh, all the textures that you might have to access in the middle of the game. So um, when you're working on, say, say I'm working on an enemy class and I want to have a texture of, for that seeker texture, I'll just go art.seeker and it'll, we have the uh, texture for that. So this is the uh, this is one thing that you really need to look out for. Uh, it's different. I've implemented this differently because I'm using Monogame and not XNA. So in the tutorial, it says use Content Manager uh, content, right? In the art .load method, you can't use that in Monogame. You have to use the Content Manager pipeline, and to be able to have access to that, you actually need to give an instance of the game root to this art .load. So if I have a look at um, my art class here. See that here? So it's slightly different. Um, I've got uh, everything the same. So static load game root instead of uh, content manager. So make sure you give it the game root instance. And if I look at game root now, um, the tutorial does say to uh, set up an instance object. So I've done that. So you can see that here. So we just instantiate it here. Uh, sorry, not instantiate it, so we define it here and then uh, store this uh, reference to this object into the instance and then I give access uh, publicly to the art class from, from this little bit here. So it goes and grabs the uh, instance um, and then returns it. And then you'll see the load here, art.load, that's where uh, we pass it in. So in the tutorial, this little bit of code will say uh, load the uh, content manager objects and for mono game projects you need to do instance so that's uh, one thing you need to be aware of when you're um, working through the tutorial all right let's just keep going see if i remember what else um yeah so in the tutorial it does say to uh, create an instance um, create a reference so that you can pass the instance of the game route to uh, other classes so that's it there and then you move on to the uh, player ship class, and here this is a uh, pretty pretty uh, simple stuff. So it's just inheriting from the uh, entity class uh, that we created earlier. So everything that was defined in the entity class is now also available in the player ship class. And over here we're just defining all those uh, values. Uh, so this bit here, and once you have the uh, player ship uh, written up. We then add this stuff into the um, game root, and this is the first time where you can run the game and actually see the um, the uh, as the player ship draw on the screen. Now you won't be able to move it or anything, but it'll be here. Okay. So you're using all the classes you made so far: the entity manager, the player ship, um, uh, running the update through the entity manager, and running the draw through the entity manager as well. Right, so that's all fairly straightforward. The next part is the uh, input. So the input's a fairly big class. Um, what all it does though is it goes and grabs the uh, direction that the player is um, moving the player, the uh, the the ship in, um, and the direction that the player is aiming in, and it does that uh, for three different control types. So there's the keyboard controls where you can use the keyboard with sad controls and the arrow keys uh, to, to, for your aim and your movement. And you can also use the with sad for movement and your mouse for aiming. And, and lastly, you can also use your uh, Xbox controller um, where you've got the two uh, thumbsticks. That, that tends to work the best, I think, I find. Now, um, there is some tricky math in here. Uh, you don't need to... Uh, well, it's good if you understand it, um, and if you download my code, I've sort of written, I've written heaps of comments all through, um, basically everything, uh, just to help myself understand it, because uh, I find, and it's partly why I create these, these videos, I find the best way to learn something is to teach it or explain it um, in your own words, uh, which is why if you have a look at my input, you'll see lots of lots of comments in here. So if you go ahead and download that or clone that. Um, GitHub repo. Um, 
uh, linked in the description. You'll, you'll be able to look through all these comments, see what I've written. Um, all right, so there's the input. Um, once you have the input, uh, basically we've got the direction that the player wants to move the ship in and the direction that the player wants to aim in. Once you have that, we can actually start moving the player ship. So if we have a look in here, uh, the tutorial, it tells you to do in the player ship.update method, um, add in this code. So at the moment, uh, you would have it blank, there will be nothing in your player update method. But uh, after you add this in, you, you'll find that we are now grabbing input from the player and then apply, and using that input to apply velocity, which is then derives the player's position um, and orientation as well. So you'll find, I uh, see this bit here, this two angle. Um, here, I saw a comment in this tutorial that somebody was wondering, wait, what's this? to angle and where is the extensions class. So uh, if that confuses you, basically all that means is you need to create an extensions class in your project. So you just see just, just this basically. And in that extension class, make it a static class um, and create a public static float to angle. Um, and what this is, this is an extension to the normal vector two um, objects that you can already create. So uh, as part of the mono game framework. So, uh, yeah, don't be confused about that. That's the only thing that seems to have got someone. Um, all right, and then we implement shooting. So in order to implement shooting, we've got the uh, bullet class. The bullet is an entity because it's something that's shown on the screen. It has all the normal entity things like an image, position, velocity, orientation, um, and an update method as well and it just uses the default uh, draw method that's defined in our abstract class for entities. Um, okay, so once you define the bullet class, uh, we have a look in the player update and we can see the tutorial has told us to uh, make sure we include a cooldown uh, for bullets so the player can't just smash bullets constantly. Um, and some fairly tricky math um, like the use of this quaternion. I put in uh, my best attempt at describing what all this stuff is, uh, but mostly it's kind of like, for me anyway, it's kind of like black box. I just sort of grab that code and I know what it does and what it's going to produce. Um, and I have a vague understanding of how it works mathematically, but uh, type the code up, it creates bullets and it shoots them off in the direction that the player's aiming on based on the uh, aim uh, that we calculated in the input. So uh, the only other thing that I did change with this was if you do have a look at my code, um, I've changed it to use instead of a fixed step, which is just frame by frame, um, we, I decided I wanted to use it as a variable step frame rate, which means um, my game loops uh, run in, uh, and distance that things move in the game uh, run in accordance with uh, real time rather than just waiting for each frame and updating each frame. Um, I read somewhere that that was a smoother way to implement uh, your update loops. So have a look at that. Uh, let's just go have a look at the player ship class and we see, see my shoot cooldown is at six frames. Um, I've actually defined it as a float um, to 120 milliseconds between shots and if we have a look uh, where that actually gets used down here um, I'm, I'm using uh, game time uh, as well um, so I pass that into uh, the uh, play update as well which is, doesn't happen in the tutorial but you can uh, have a look at uh, what variable time step uh, means uh, so if you have a look at my velocity um, I do have the speed uh, as a modifier, so I can modify this to increase or decrease the player's speed, but then we multiply that by the total amount of uh, time that has passed since the last update, and then I update the position of the player based on how much time has passed. So if the computer slows down and um, and we, we're sort of a few frames behind, uh, the player will move uh, accordingly, according to real time, rather than uh, just a, in a frame. So, so 
if it was set as a fixed step, it might play my only move here and the game will feel a bit slower. Uh, whereas in real time, uh, the, play the player then gets moves maybe like over here instead um, and accounts for that slowdown in performance. So um, I don't know, I think there's advantages and disadvantages to both methods, but it's up, up to you. Have, have a look at the difference uh, if you Google up uh, fixed step and uh, variable step game rate, frame rates. Okay, so yep, so these are the uh, helper methods um, that uh, I was talking about earlier in the extension. So there's also a math util class that you need to create uh, for part of this tutorial, and that will store a bunch of mathematical things like this from Polar. Uh, all right, and then just the last bit is just to draw the mouse cursor. So once you've done all of that, um, you will notice uh, after you've done your if you're if you're using a uh, mono game three point six in your project, and you are creating a UWP project, uh, you'll run into this error. Well, not an error. It's just a bug with the current with the three point six version of mono game where if the player is using a keyboard and a mouse, you'll get a lot of lag in the gameplay. Uh, it feels like the mouse is the keyboard is waiting for the mouse to stop moving before the keyboard gets updates and that just freezes the whole game until you stop moving the mouse. So uh, that, that, that was in a thread uh, on the Mono Game community forums uh, somewhere um, and it was acknowledged as an issue and it has been fixed in 3.61 and probably in the latest development release which is 3.7 now I think. So uh, I haven't updated mine yet, uh, but it isn't a huge issue. I'm mainly focusing on the um, the Xbox controllers anyway, and I'll update once that official release of 3.6.1 uh, gets released. So that's uh, another little pickup that you need to look out for when you're working through this stuff. Um, all right, so let's give it a run, show you where we're at. So the only other thing that I that I changed as well is to have some debug text on the screen, and also I've set it to so you can see the debug text up here, and I've also set this to, to run in full screen just because uh, I don't know it looks nice. So you can see so I'm using the keyboard controls here, and uh, my debug text is showing me what values we've got for aim, move, and orientation. So there's the keyboard, and then uh, using the controller. It works really nicely with the controller. And you can change the speed and, and whatever you want um, as you see fit if you're working through this as well. All right, um, I don't have an escape or an exit method yet, so I'm just gonna press Alt to 4 to exit that. And um, yeah, that's it guys. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually did try to keep this a little bit shorter, but it looks like uh, I went to 20 minutes again so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, with future updates, I'm just going to I'm going to uh, make more frequent videos, but much shorter. I found that most people don't watch at the end of these. Uh, but if you watch the end of this, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to uh, I hope to uh, start creating uh, more and more videos of this stuff. So I'm going to start with this uh, tutorial, work through it, uh, give you updates on how it's going. Um, I'll then start creating my own game. Um, and I'll make some videos on different libraries. So the, the first couple of ones that I'm going to look at is uh, the physics engine. It's called Farseer Physics, and uh, Penumbra, which is a light engine, which would be really cool. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Um, I'll see you next time.